Hey guys, welcome back to another turn by turn video. Today we're going to be playing Star Realms. And Star Realms is a two player spaceship combat deck building game. And that sounds complicated, but it's really not. Star Realms is a fast paced game where players are battling one another trying to destroy the other player. Deck building is simply a player begins the game with a small deck of cards and then as you play the game you're going to be purchasing new cards to add to your deck essentially building on top of it trying to build a more powerful deck of cards that's going to make make it easier for you to destroy or beat your opponent in the game of star realms players start the game with 50 authority points and authority points are kind of like the health points in the game and authority points are denoted by this green shield symbol and the first player whose authority points drops down to zero loses the game. There really are two other big symbols to be paying attention to during, during the gameplay, and that's trade pool and combat pool. Your trade pool is the number of trade points or currency points that you have to spend to purchase new cards. And then your combat pool are combat points that you're going to be accumulating as you play cards. And those numbers are what you're going to be using to directly attack your opponent. You're either going to be attacking your opponent, opponent's authority points, trying to drop him closer to that zero, or you're going to have to be destroying bases or outposts that your opponent has built. The game itself plays quick. Each player starts the game with 10 cards, and these are kind of like the starter ships of the game just to get the game going. Player one on the first turn begins the game by drawing three cards. I will say that I am not going to play a full game. It'll take too long to get through all 50 authority points on either player one or player two. Since I'm going to be playing player one and player two, it's going to take it's going to stretch the game out a little bit longer than what it normally would take. The game can play really fast, especially if both players are pretty familiar with the game. But for now, I'm just going to play enough turns just to give you a good sense of how the game flows. So starting with player one, I have my three cards and I have put these cards into play. It doesn't cost anything to put cards into play, you just simply lay them down and they're considered to be in play. And I have two scout cards and then a viper card. And the scout cards bring me two points into my trade pool and then the viper card brings me one combat point. So I have two trade to spend so I will look at trade row here and see which cards that I want to purchase and I'm going to pick up an explorer and then the viper allows me to take one point off of the player two's authority pool so I already immediately attack in the first round all right player two I have the cards drawn and we're gonna put their cards into play we have four scouts and then one viper so Player two is gonna have four in their trade pool and then one in their combat pool. So again, we're gonna look out here at trade row. And unfortunately, we've drawn up a lot of high cost cards. So we're gonna pick up two explorers to use up our four trade. And then we have one combat and we're gonna use that to attack player one's authority. So we're gonna subtract them by one. And that's gonna end player two. All right, I have player one's cards here. and. I would quickly mention that typically you're going to draw your cards after you discard. I'm just picking these cards up at the start of my turn because that way it's just a little bit easier for me to keep track of everything that's going on. But typically in a game, you're going to be drawing cards after you do your discard and clean up portion of, your, of the phases. So as player one here, I have five scout cards and that's going to give me a trade pool of five. Again, not a lot out here to buy, so I'm going to pick up this Explorer. And then I'm going to pick up this trade bot because once you pick up a card off a trade row of these five cards, you're going to simply replace it with a new card, hoping that I get a card different than the Explorer. We do. We get the Cutter. I'm going to go ahead and buy that as well. That's going to eat up all five of my trade. And then we'll replace that card with this card. And then that's going to do it for player one. All right, player two. And player two has one Viper and four Scouts. So again, we have four in our trade. We're gonna go ahead and pick up this Missile Bot, replace the card out in trade row. We still have two to spend. We're gonna go ahead and pick up another Explorer card. So that's gonna use up all of our trade pool. And then we have the Viper, which has one combat, so we're gonna use it to attack player one and then further reduce them by one authority point. And that's going to end player two. 
So you can see in the beginning of the game, turns can go pretty quick back and forth, and they'd probably be going even quicker if there was actually two people playing the game because you'd have both people managing their own hands. Player one, discard or draw a pile, ran out of cards, so I picked up the remaining two cards that I had. Then you simply shuffle up your discard pile to create a new draw deck, and now I have five brand new cards, and I'm going to get ready to play those. I have three scouts and two vipers. So I have a trade pool of three, which I'm gonna go ahead and pick up this trading post card. And then I have two vipers. First we'll replace that card out on trade row. Two vipers, so I'm gonna use those to attack the player two and reduce them by two authority points. And that is gonna end the turn for player one. Okay, player two. And as you can see, Players are really just trying to build up that deck. They're, this is the deck building portion of the game. This is what the game kind of revolves around. And it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're not familiar with these types of games, but you're really just trying to look for cards that are gonna add to your combat pool in a greater way or add to your trade pool so that you can get bigger buys. Because you can see we're kind of stuck here with these four cards that are out here right now that have a value of eight, 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 and seven. Pretty high cost. That's that top right hand number. So just trying to build cards up that are going to give us bigger plays a little bit later in the game so that we can start purchasing bases and outposts, but then also bigger plays in terms of combat so that you can attack your, your opponent. And then you can also see there's different types of cards that have different symbols or different colors. There's different factions in the game. And if you can get multiple factions of the same card, this of the same or multiple cards of the same faction and then play those, you're actually going to bring into bonus abilities that's going to give you even greater plays. So player two, we have our cards drawn. We have a couple scouts here, giving us two to our trade. Then we have an explorer, which is gonna give us four. And then we have a couple combat cards. So right off the bat, we have a four in our trade. We're gonna go ahead and pick up the blob fighter. And then we're gonna replace that card, see what's next. And we have a battle pod. We're gonna pick it up as well. So now we're down to one in our combat or in our trade pool. And then we're gonna actually pick up this Federation shuttle as well. So that's gonna eat up all four of our trade pool. And now we look at combat. And for this, we have the missile bot. You may scrap a card in your hand or discard pile. So we could scrap a card here. And I think we are not going to just because we wanna to try to keep our trade going since these expensive cards are sitting out here. But for this, we have three combat. So we're gonna go ahead and attack player one and then reduce their authority points by three. And that is going to end player two's turn. All right, back over to player one. We have a couple scouts again. Two to our trade. And then we have an explorer, so we're up to four on our trade. Then we have the cutter. And then we have the trade bot. The trade bot brings one additional trade point to our trade pool. And then the cutter brings two. And then we also gain four authority points for this card. So it, well, there's actually cards that are gonna grant you authority points back in the game, kind of giving you a little bit of life back. So there's more strategy here than just attacking, buying, but there's also some survival as well. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven points in our trade. And I think we might pick up this base Yes, we're gonna buy this for seven, which is gonna just extinguish all of our trade pool for this turn. We replace that next card out here for trade row. And then that ends player one's turn. All right, player two, we have just some basic ships in here, it looks like. We have a couple, three scouts, which is gonna give us three in our trade. Then we have an explorer, which puts us back, puts us up five. And then we have a viper. So we're gonna pick up a few cards here in Trade Row. We're gonna go ahead and pick up this Embassy Yacht for three, which leaves us with two. And then we're gonna go ahead and pick up another Explorer. And that's gonna use up all of our trade pull. And then we have a Viper, so we're gonna attack player one and subtract one point of authority back off of them. And that will end player two's turn. All right, back to player one. Turns are still moving pretty quick. Not a lot of complexity in the game yet because we just haven't got any good cards rolling into our hands. But player one has three scouts and an explorer, so we're at five trade. And then we have the trade bot, which is gonna give us one more. So we're at six total. And then it says you may scrap a card in your hand or discard pile. We're not gonna do that for this turn, so we have six trade. 
and we're gonna look at possibly picking up this port of call outpost. Yes, that's what we're gonna pick up. Replace that card out in trade row. And that does it for player one, another fast turn. All right, player two has their cards drawn. And again, they've drawn basic cards. We have four scouts and an explorer. So I'll, we have a trade pool of six total, which isn't all bad because we've got some of these basic cards or basic ships out of the way in this turn, which means we're gonna have more, hopefully better cards with a little bit more juice or a little bit more power coming up in some subsequent turns. But we have six trade here and we're gonna pick up this blob carrier because it has an attack of seven, which is pretty nice. And we've also been picking up a lot of these green blob faction cards, which means if we can put a couple of those into play at once, we'll be activating some second abilities, which is only gonna increase the strength of some of our turns. So we wanna replace that card out in trade row, and that is going to end player two's turn. All right, we're back over here to player one, and player one has a few unique cards that we haven't been able to play yet, which is good that we're gonna play those now. We have a couple bases that we're gonna put into play. And we actually have one base and one outpost. And outposts are good because an outpost has to be destroyed before any more authority points for player one can be attacked. Bases, they're fine. They can be ignored and a player can still attack authority points, but an outpost has to be attacked first but bases are gonna give me a little bit of a boost in each of my plays, which it might be up to, it might be prudent for player two to wanna to just destroy all of them. That way I'm not getting any extra additional bonuses. So we're gonna put those into play. We have two bases, we're one base and one outpost. And then we have a couple basic cards. We have a scout and a viper, and then we have the cutter. So now we, the plays are gonna get a little bit more complicated because we have to kind of go through these, kind of paying attention closely to detail to see what we can pick up and for the trading post, we could either get an either or, one authority point or one trade. We're gonna take the trade to try to increase what we get a spend here. So our trade is actually gonna move up to two, three, and four. And then the central office says two trade. You may put the next ship you acquire this turn on the top of your deck. So this is gonna be nice because if we pick a ship up here, we'll be able to put that on our top of our deck versus having to wait for it to come back up to our discard pile. So let's go ahead and take care of the trade. Let's take a look at what we're going to pick up. So we'll pick up the Ram for three. We'll put that on top of our deck. And we still have three left. And we have the Supply Bot and the Imperial Fighter. We are gonna pick up the Imperial Fighter. So we have two left. And then we have a Trade Pod. So we're gonna pick that up as well for two. And then we'll replace that as well on the trade row. And that's gonna extinguish our trade pool. Next, we have some authority points. We'll go ahead and pick those up. We can pick four of those up. Which puts player one even higher in those. Now we'll take a look at combat. In combat, we have one for the Viper. And then it looks like we don't have any more, but the cutter, we actually get four. We actually get to activate that second ability, that ally ability, since we have three cards in play. You only need two to make this happen, but we actually have three. So we're gonna be able to pick up, we have five combat in our combat pool that we're gonna to use to directly attack player two's authority points. So we're gonna pull five away from them. And then that's gonna end player one's turn. We'd simply remove the ships from play, but the bases stay in play until they're destroyed by the other player. So these bases give you ongoing buffs throughout the game until that player can destroy those. And they can destroy them by either having a combat higher than the number down here in the bottom right in these shields, that's their defense number. So player two is gonna need a combat of four to destroy this outpost, and then a combat of six to destroy the central office. All right, player two, taking a look at their cards. We have a Scout, we have a Viper, a couple basic ships there. Then we have an Explorer, which is gonna add a little bit more to trade. And then we have an Embassy Yacht and then a Blob Fighter. So we don't get any ally synergies on this turn. We have three, four, five total in our trade pool, so we'll take care of that first. We're gonna look at picking up a Supply Bot for three. New card out, still nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up another Explorer. 
only because they get two currency, which might help later on, but then we can scrap them if we need to and pick up some combat because you can scrap as many cards as you want in a turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's gonna extinguish the trade number, or the trade that we have. We get three authority. So we'll go ahead and get three new authority here from the embassy yacht. And then we have four combat, which we will use to destroy the outpost of player one. So when an outpost or base is destroyed, it's not destroyed from the game, it's just simply put over in the other player's discard pile. So that's gonna end player two's turn. All right, and now player one, we've drawn four scouts and then the ram. So we have four, five, six in our trade pool because the central office continues to give us plus two every turn until it's destroyed. So we have six in our trade pool. We are going to look at potentially picking up this base for four, which still leaves us two. And we are going to use it to pick up an Explorer card. So that's going to extinguish the Explorer we can actually place on top of our deck because the central office also says you may put the next ship you acquire this turn on the top of your deck. So we'll go ahead and put that there so we know we're going to get two more points for spending for trade. That's going to extinguish the trade pool numbers. And then we have the ram, which has an attack of five. Pretty strong attack number, so we're going to use it to attack player two. Now we're down to 40 points for player two. And that's going to end player one's turn. We simply discard the ship cards, leaving that base out there for the next turn. Okay, we're back over here to player two. And I think we're going to go ahead and make this the last turn for this video. I don't want to make the video too long. This game will stretch on forever, especially since I'm playing both sides of the table. But I think this gives you enough turns to show you exactly how Star Realms plays turn by turn. The main difference is if the game was to continue on, you're going to keep collecting cards that are going to give you more powerful buys, more powerful combat points, and you should be able to do more damage to each player, and the game should escalate fairly quickly. It takes a little bit in the first part of the game to get your army or your armada kind of built up, but then as the game continues, you should have a healthy batch of cards that you've either been scrapping to get rid of low cards that you don't want anymore, and then only keeping your more powerful cards, which are giving you those bigger buys and those bigger combat points. So let's go ahead and put into play the last hand for player two. And they have two scouts, a Federation shuttle, a Viper, and a Battle Pod. And the two scouts and the Federation Shuttle, that's going to give us four trade to add to our trade pool. So we'll spend that now. And we will purchase the Supply Bot. And then we'll replace that card with the Defense Center out in the middle of the trade row. And we still have one trade point to spend, but there's no cards that we can buy. So we're just going to lose that for this turn. Then we'll move over to our Viper and Battle Pod. And the Battle Pod has a combat of four, but then it says you may scrap a card in the trade row. And that's a pretty neat card because what that allows you to do is that allows you to scrap any card that you want from Trade Row for free. And the reason you'd use that card is if you'd been really paying attention to the other player. Say the other player, player one in this instance, had been buying a lot of the yellow ally cards. Well, there's two out here now. There's the Battle Cruiser and the Fleet HQ. This might be a good time for you to go ahead and destroy one of those cards and take them out of play, out of the game, because you don't want player one to end up with those cards. I don't really recall what player one has really been purchasing since I've been playing both sides. So I'm not going to use that ability and besides it's the last turn anyway. So we will use the combat on these cards. They have a four on the battle pod and a one on the viper which gives us a total of five. And we could try to use that to destroy the central office but it has a defense of six so we will not be able to destroy that base. But we don't have to destroy the base to destroy authority points. We only have to destroy those outposts before we can do damage to authority points. So we're gonna use these five combat points and use them against directly onto player one's authority points, dropping them five off of their authority. And then that's going to end the turn for player two, and that's gonna wrap up this turn-by-turn -turn video for Star Realms. Hopefully that gives you a good look at how the game plays. You really aren't gonna be missing a whole lot except for you'll have bigger plays at the end of the game where you'll have larger combat point pools, you'll have larger trade pools, and you'll be doing bigger damage to the other player, but then also hopefully have more bases in play to help protect your authority points and to protect and to give you buffs as you play. 
but this should give you enough looks to show you exactly how Star Realms plays turn by turn for each player. The end of the, the end score for this game was player two had ended with 40 authority points and player one had 47. So the game was still pretty close and still pretty pretty early. Player one had those cards that just kept giving them authority points back. So even though player two was attacking, player one was able to replenish those authority points with some of the cards that they had previously purchased. But this should give you enough detail on how the game exactly plays turn by turn. Let me know if you liked the video by giving me a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment box below. Thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next episode.